Hello, this is Pastor Scott, and welcome to The Daily Message. Today is Wednesday, it is July 14th, and I'm back. So, for some of you, that's good news. For some of you, you're like, oh, this guy again. Yep, it's me. I'm uh, here again, just doing another daily message. I hope that you, uh, I hope you had a nice vacation from me. Um, I did have a, a really good vacation, and uh, I appreciate everyone uh, being so gracious about that. Uh, today's scripture verse is, uh, the people could, it's Ezra 3.13, the people could not distinguish the sound of joy from the sound of the people's weeping. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that in our devotion, and um, it's just a verse and a story that I haven't been able to get out of my head. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about it. Uh, a reminder to subscribe and donate. Uh, the links to that are down below in the YouTube channel. And uh, we appreciate your contributions and connecting with us on Facebook or via email or whoever you want to do that. So there you go. All right. Today's joke. So uh, this, is a, this is a good one. Uh, it's about an Irish guy in Ireland uh, who walks into a bar in Dublin, right? And uh, he orders three pints of Guinness, okay? And sits in the back and he drinks all three pints, each one in turn. When he finishes, he comes back to the bar and he orders three more. The bartender says, you know, a pint goes flat. You know, like, like after I pour it, you know, it, it's best to order, you know, like order one and drink it and then order one and then drink it. It's just, you know, it's just having them sit around isn't, isn't so good. And the guy says, well, you see, it's not really about that. I have two brothers and they're far away, right? They're far away from me. They don't, we don't live together anymore. One is in America, one's in Australia. Here I am still in Dublin. And so what I do uh, is, you know, when we all, we all left home, we promised that we'd drink together. So uh, to remember the days that we had, so, you know, when I drink, I drink one for me, one for my brother in America, and one for my brother in Australia. Martin was like, oh, okay, well, that's, that's kind of neat. That's kind of nice. And so uh, he just, he just leaves it be. The guy becomes a, a regular. And every time he comes in, he orders three pints and he takes them over and he drinks them all in turn and uh, always drinks the same way, right? So one day he comes in and he orders two pints. And the bartender pours him and he says, uh, look, I don't want to intrude, you know, but um, I just want to say that I'm, I'm, I'm sorry uh, for your loss and I wanted to offer my condolences. And the Irish guy looks kind of confused and he says, uh, I see the light bulb goes off and he says, oh, no, no. He says, everybody's just fine. It's just that my wife had us join the Baptist church and I had to quit drinking, but it hasn't affected my brothers at all. I like that joke. Someday I plan to go to Ireland and hang out in a pub and see what happens. Uh, so today's sign that is the apocalypse is that a deer came along and nibbled off the ends of the bottom branches of my apple tree. Now the tree is okay. Both of them, both my apple trees. I have two, both of them. But, but where I live, you, like I have no idea what a deer was doing where I live uh, because I live in Plymouth and I don't, I don't live in like the heart of Plymouth. I live like up a hill and like 300 yards from Heinz. So like maybe there was a deer that got bored there, but it couldn't have been anything else because it was, the branches were a bit off chest high. Um, but like, what is a deer doing at my house eating my, like I have just, I just, it's gotta be the apocalypse. If where I live, deer eating apple trees, it is clearly the apocalypse. Uh, but say sign that it is not the apocalypse is that Pastor Beth and I, on a return from our vacation, swung by Trinity Seminary, where we met and were married. And uh, we, we walked around and looked at the old place and stood where we got married and had a picture taken and, uh, you know, reenacted some of our wedding, staged wedding photographs and, and took our daughter to the spot where we first met. And it was really cool and largely unchanged. A few things were different, but largely unchanged. Um, so if, you know... 20 years since our wedding this year, uh, no wait, 22 this year, um, 20, 20 since we graduated, that's 20 since we graduated, 22 since we got married. If it looks the same since we graduated 20 years ago, can't be the apocalypse. But if a deer is where, where I live eating apple trees, I mean, it's only a matter of time before they come for you. Okay. So, you know, you, you better watch out for those things. So clearly you're going to have to decide for yourself whether it is the apocalypse or not. 
Uh, what's happening at church? Just some things for you to know as you arrive. There's going to be, when you walk in the door, there'll be some hand sanitizer, so you can avail yourself of that. That'll be right there. Um, you'll get your, you'll get your uh, bulletin and your communion lunchable uh, as you enter. Just reach in and grab one. I think that's, I can't remember if we're handing them out or uh, if you're supposed to reach in. I think, no, no, we're handing them to you. That's right. We're handing them to you. I, I we're handing them to you. So uh, sorry about that. I got I got confused. I still have vacation brain. Uh, we'll hand them to you. So uh, off you go, and then um, and then just you know the ushers will uh, will you know kind of ask you when to leave. Uh, we will pass the the basket so that you can put your um, there'll be a basket on the end of the pew so that you can put your lunchable in it and pass the basket down. That way you're not handling a lunchable for the last ten minutes of worship. Um, so that's kind of the deal there. Uh, everything else will be pretty self-explanatory. Uh, just a reminder that we do ask you to wear masks. Uh, August 2nd uh, is the next Healthy Worship Task Force meeting. So uh, feedback is welcome, right? If you, you know, go to this worship and you have some thoughts and you want to share them, great. Uh, positive, you know, or constructive. Um, constructive, please. Um, no, that's fine. Uh, I'll put the links to, for who to email in the uh, in the daily message email, um, that that'll be in there. Uh, mostly, I'm doing that because I I don't have them in my notes. So there you go. Uh, so that's kind of what's what's happening. Um, and of course, this uh, Sunday will be the installation of Pastor Morgan Walker, our intern. She is on site. She has now worked for Holy Cross for a grand total of 49 hours. So she's she's got it all figured out. She's amazing. Um, you can stop by if you want and say hello. Uh, she's in the office, normal office hours. Uh, she will likely be in the office only three days a week, kind of going forward because she's not full time. She's 30 hours a week with us. But um, yeah, pop in and say hello. I'm sure she'd love to meet you. All right. So today's um, devotion, I'm doing something a little bit different um, because of a thing that I think is a good thing to do that I want to share with you, which is, this is going to be, this is what I'm going to read for you is our uh, Old Testament reading for Sunday. And it is going to be the subject of my sermon. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, well, you're going to give away your whole sermon. Um, that's not a bad thing. That's not a bad thing. Um, I think that sometimes it is helpful in your devotional practice to read a different verse each day. Sometimes that's good. But as I shared earlier, sometimes it's good to read the same thing over and over, right? And to really live in it and to dwell in a verse or a story that you feel God is calling you and to, calling you to and saying, I want you to live in this for a while. This is, this is where you are. This is, this is what I'm saying to you. Get to know this well. Uh, there's a lot of value in that. There's value in, in each day reading into something different. There's value in that. And there's also value in really digging into something. And so that's why today's daily message is this story from my Ezra. And it might be next week too. We might be talking about this same story next week. Um, because there's just, it's a different experience of our faith to, to read the same thing over and over and pull different things out of it. So you're going to hear different things from me today than you will on Sunday. But you'll also hear some of the same things. Because saying the same things over and over again. I mean, one of the spiritual practices that, that monks and nuns and cluster people use is they will repeat the same verse over and over and over in their prayer, in their meditation, in their singing. That's what chanting is. When we chant, we repeat the same verse over and over. Why? Because it gets, it gets into us and takes root in us in a different way and in a more powerful way. So, this is from Ezra 3. Uh, we're going to start in verse 10. We're going to go to verse 13. Again, as a, as a recap, the people of Israel were taken away into captivity and their country was destroyed. And now some of them have come back and their ancestors, their descendants, I'm sorry, the, 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 they've come back, but it's like 50 years later. And so only the really old people remember what it was like before their country was destroyed. So uh, when the builders laid the foundation of the temple of the Lord, the priests in their vestments were stationed to praise the Lord with trumpets and the Levites. The sons of Asaph with symbols, according to the direction of the king of David of Israel. And they sang responsibly, praising and giving thanks to the Lord, for God is good, for God's steadfast love endures forever toward Israel. And all the people responded with a great shout when they praised the Lord, because the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid. 
But many of the priests and Levites and heads of families, old people, who had seen the first house on its foundations, wept with a loud voice when they saw this house, though many also shouted aloud for joy, so that the people could not distinguish the sound of the joyful shout from the sound of the people's weeping. For the people shouted so loudly that the sound was heard far away. And what has stuck with me for so long, and what I talked about in the sermon series last August, and what we'll talk about on Sunday, is this coming together and the weeping and the joy being intermingled so that people couldn't tell the difference. And that's going to be our experience on Sunday. There is going to be joy and celebration, and I'm excited to return. Um, I know that for some folks, it's not everything that they want it to be, um, but I'm thankful for the that we, that we are coming together, and I choose to be thankful, and I choose to have a heart of gratitude rather than a heart of disappointment. Um, and you can choose that too if you wish. Uh, but the mingling together of joy and, and sorrow is, is where we will find ourselves because there are sisters and brothers who we love who will not be with us. And uh, they have died in this time and they're not there. And that is sad. And there is sadness over the times that we missed together that we can't get back. Uh, but there is joy over the coming together and the being together. And so they're going to be they're going to be mingled. And this Sunday is going to be more about the joy. So we're going to focus on that, and that's going to be our our focus for worship. But um, there will be sorrow in there too. And what I'm saying is that's okay. That is okay. Uh, if you feel both, that's normal and healthy and good. And uh, we will all be in both places. The worship will be more focused on the joy part. Um, but that's just where we're all at with all of this. And so we're going to pray now. And our prayer focus is for our worship on Sunday. That it would be a great worship. I mean, maybe you never thought about that. Maybe you never thought about praying about worship. Just like you maybe never thought about praying about praying. But prayer about everything. Pray about everything, right? We're going to pray for our worship on Sunday. That it's going to be... Uh, a wonderful worship for us and for all who gather and for God's reign here on earth. We're going to pray for God to be with us. We're going to pray for our joy and our sorrow. And we're just going to pray for God to, to bless our, our return to the sanctuary on Sunday. So I invite you to get comfortable in your chair. I'm going to straighten my back and I'm going to put my feet on the floor, my hands on my lap. I'm going to take three deep breaths. God, we pray that you would be with us on Sunday as we return to our sanctuary. Please be with our, all who gather as we, as we come together in joy at the chance to return and in sorrow for the things we lost and those we lost. Be with us. Be with us and make it a powerful experience of your spirit, your love, your grace, and your ability to triumph in all circumstances. We pray, Lord, that you would be with us on Sunday morning that it would be a great day for us and a day where we can be feeling the things we need to feel in your presence together. Um, bless us as we gather on Sunday in the sanctuary and make it a great day for us, for you, and for your reign here on earth. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Remember, Jesus is risen, right? Jesus is still risen. That has not changed. The tomb is still empty. That has not changed. No matter what you're going through, that has not changed. Be smart. Stay safe. Love everybody. And I'll see you soon.